and welcome to Capital Insights, a podcast offered by the WRA to discuss key issues that are important to property owners and the real estate industry. My name is Tom Larson, Executive Vice President of the WRA, and today's topic is the Wisconsin state budget. For the last several months, the Wisconsin legislature has been busy crafting the state's spending and fiscal policies that will be part of a two-year biennial budget that will outline the priorities for programs and services for the state of Wisconsin. With me to talk about the state budget is Senator Howard Markline, who is one of the co-chairs of the legislature's budget writing committee. Senator Markline is from Spring Green, Wisconsin in Sauk County. He represents the 17th Senate District and was first elected in the state, into the state assembly in 2010 and then elected to the Senate in 2014. Prior to being elected to the legislature, Howard was a certified public accountant and a certified fraud examiner. Also worth noting uh, is that Senator Markline has a 100% voting record on realtor issues since being elected into the legislature in 2010. Senator Markline, welcome and thank you for joining us on today's podcast. Good to be here. Senator Markline, uh, you guys just wrapped up the, uh, the state budget uh, last week and congratulations on finishing uh, a very arduous task on time. As the co-chair of the State Budget Committee, what would you say are the top three big picture accomplishments of the recently uh, passed state budget that is now on Governor Evers' desk? Well, I think um, you know every budget uh, probably takes on a kind of a, a tone of its own. Um, when I think back to the three um, biggest accomplishments in, in this budget, um, I would put, um, I think the tax cuts got to be near the top of that list. Uh, we ended up with a um, uh, incredible um, tax cut for the taxpayers of, of the state. Um, and uh, so, I mean, that, that's, that's huge. Um, secondly, uh, the transportation budget. Um, I live, you know, in a rural area of Wisconsin, Southwest Wisconsin, and uh, rural roads, local roads are of incredible importance to me. And uh, this transportation budget was um, incredible, you know, what it, uh, in terms of our local roads. Um, as far as the, the Wisconsin uh, um, Towns Association has characterized this transportation budget as the best transportation budget that they've ever seen. So, so transportation would be my second big thing. And, and thirdly, um, healthcare. Um, you know, our hospitals, our, our nursing homes, uh, and the work, the people that work in those facilities had a, they, they went through hell the last uh, 12, 14 months. And, uh, you know, a year ago or so, uh, our hospitals had delayed all of their elective surgeries. Um, there weren't discharges out of the hospitals in the nursing homes. And then we uh, increased the uh, pay rates for our personal care workers, um, $78 million and our direct care workers by over hundred million. So, um, and we did all that uh, without expanding um, Medicaid. So uh, I think we accomplished a lot in the area of healthcare. We increased the funding uh, for our dentists uh, because so often people don't, uh, go to the dentist or sometimes, you know, go to the dentist and end up in our emergency rooms, which is incredibly expensive. So um, again, uh, tax cuts, transportation and, and healthcare would be my top three um, wins in this budget. Senator Markline, you mentioned that the top three, uh, I guess, highlights of the budget from your perspective. One of the unique challenges this time around was the influx of so much federal money. And wondering if you can tell us uh, briefly how much money was coming into the state of Wisconsin uh, and how this was factored into the state budget process. Well, you're right. I mean, this budget, um, the amount of federal money that was coming in the state of Wisconsin um, presented us with, a, I guess, a unique uh, opportunity and also a unique uh, challenge. And we recognize this on the Joint Finance Committee as we went through the budget process. You know, and you look at uh, some of the big ticket items here, uh, our local units of government, uh, this would be our counties, uh, cities, villages, our counties alone got $1.1 billion directly from the federal government. Our cities, villages, and towns got 
uh, $1 billion from the federal government. Our K-12 schools um, got $2.6 billion uh, from the federal government. Uh, our universities, $560 million. And then there was you know, payments that were made uh, to child care providers, uh, $576 million. Uh, the governor had received $4.4 billion uh, that can be um, distributed at his uh, discretion. So uh, when you add up uh, all this, I mean, there's, there wasn't a phenomenal amount of money that came into the state of Wisconsin. And, we, and as a joint finance committee, we recognized that that was coming in. Uh, and um, you know, money's fungible, uh, it all spends the same. And so we're aware of the, uh, the fact that a lot of money came in. We're also, we're cognizant of the fact that we're not gonna have this two years from now. We're not gonna have these billions of dollars of federal money uh, two years from now. So we were um, conscientious in terms of putting money aside. We put a, an incredible amount of money away into the a rainy day fund so that uh, two years from now we'll be in a in a good uh, place when uh, we don't have this federal money available to us. Uh, this two year budget provides uh, new historic highs with respect to tax cuts for individuals and homeowners. Uh, you provided some uh, tax cuts in the area of uh, 2.5 billion with respect to income taxes and another 650 uh, million in property tax relief. Wondering if you can provide some additional details on these uh, tax cuts and you know some of the things that you were weighing when when deciding on uh, on delivering these tax cuts back to the public. Well, the the income tax cuts uh, that you mentioned, uh, you know, 2.5 billion dollars uh, was significant. And now I'm a CPA. I keep track of these numbers every month, and I knew the numbers were going to be really good. But I undershot the my estimate uh, dramatically. I, I figured a couple billion dollars. So anyway, what I'm getting at here is that you know the, the, we collected a lot of income taxes, a lot of sales taxes from our taxpayers, and so I believe it's only appropriate that when we collect billions more than what we had expected, that we should return uh, some of that money back to the taxpayers that had. Uh, Paid it in, and so uh, with the income taxes, we targeted the people that are making from twenty-four thousand dollars to two hundred and sixty thousand uh, dollars per year, and so we reduced their tax rate from uh, roughly six and a quarter percent down to five and a quarter percent for a one, basically a one percentage uh, cut in the tax bracket between twenty-four thousand and two sixty. So property taxes. You know, the, the property tax reduction is probably going to amount to about a $200 uh, reduction in the property taxes on a typical home. A typical home in Wisconsin is about $200,000. So uh, again, that's uh, very meaningful tax relief. Um, I believe in, in total, you're looking at about a $1,200 savings between the income tax and the uh, property tax for a typical family in, in the state of Wisconsin. So I'm just happy to be, be able to provide that kind of a tax cut. Well, that's uh, th those are some significant tax cuts, uh, Senator Mark Line. The state uh, invested some uh, significant money in broadband, and this has been a top priority for uh, our organization. It's just become such an important part of uh, everyday life that uh, the state made a, a pretty significant uh, investment in broadband. I wonder if you can tell us uh, a little bit about that. Sure, yeah, and broadband has been one of my top priorities uh, over the last uh, half dozen years or better. As you mentioned, uh, in the last year, the importance of uh, uh, reliable, uh, fast broadband has, has been accentuated. and. I understand that uh, fully. I live out in the, in the country and we're also aware of the amount of federal money that has been invested or, and actually will be invested here in the state of Wisconsin. Um, to date, there's about $1.5 billion of federal money. These, this is CAF2, ACAM, RDOF, uh, USDA, uh, a number of these federal programs, but $1.5 billion uh, that has been allocated to Wisconsin. Of that, um, about 650 million 
uh, has been spent. So there's a lot of money yet to be spent here, almost $850 million yet to be invested. And a lot of this money is leveraged. Uh, it's matched against private investment. So um, there's, there's going to be a lot of investment in the state of Wisconsin uh, via uh, federal uh, broadband money. The governor also announced a $100 million allocation uh, that is open right now. I think that ends uh, near the end of uh, July, July 27th. So uh, we have a, another $100 million on top of the funds that I just mentioned. So we were aware of this when we did the broadband um, program. And so uh, we put 125 million into the program, which uh, compares to the past budget was like $48 million. So we made a much a larger investment. And I think the strategy here on our part is, is to, let's wait and see a little bit about how this federal money is deployed so that we can come back here and have our state money maybe fill in uh, some of the holes that the federal money uh, hasn't hit uh, over the next uh, the next year or so. Well, uh, Senator Mark, Mark Lamb, we very much appreciate uh, your uh, joining us today and for your leadership on the Joint Finance Committee, uh, working to make sure the state's fiscal house is in order and delivering $3.3 billion in income and property tax cuts to the citizens of Wisconsin. Thank you, Tom. To our listeners, please remember that advocacy is one of the most important things we do as an organization, and our PAC allows the WRA to support legislators like Howard Markline, who support our issues uh, like broadband and reducing property taxes. Thank you.